Indonesian Bahasa Indonesia Bahasa Indonesia is the official language of Indonesia. It is a standardized register of Malay, an Austronesian language that has been used as a lingua franca in the multilingual Indonesian archipelago for centuries. Indonesia is the fourth most populous nation in the world. Of its large population, the majority speak Indonesian, making it one of the most widely spoken languages in the world. Most Indonesians, aside from speaking the national language, are fluent in at least one of the more than 700 indigenous local languages. Examples include Javanese, Sundanese, and Balinese, which are commonly used at home and within the local community. However, most formal education, and nearly all national mass media, governance, administration, judiciary, and other forms of communication, are conducted in Indonesian. The Indonesian name for the language Bahasa Indonesia is also occasionally found in English and other languages. History Early Kingdoms era Indonesian is a standardized register of Riau Malay, which despite its common name is not the Malay dialect native to the Riau Islands, but rather the classical Malay of the Malaccan royal courts. Originally spoken in northeast Sumatra, Malay has been used as a lingua franca in the Indonesian archipelago for half a millennium. It might be attributed to its ancestor, the Old Malay language which can be traced back to the 7th century. The Kedukan Bukit inscription is the oldest surviving specimen of Old Malay, the language used by Srivijayan Empire. Since the 7th century, the Old Malay language has been used in Nusantara Indonesian archipelago, evidenced by Srivijaya inscriptions and by other inscriptions from coastal areas of the archipelago, such as those discovered in Java. <laughs> Old Malay as lingua franca Trade contacts carried on by various ethnic peoples at the time were the main vehicle for spreading the Old Malay language, which was the main communications medium among the traders. Ultimately, the Old Malay language became a lingua franca and was spoken widely by most people in the archipelago. Indonesian in its normative form has essentially the same material basis as the standard Malaysian register of Malay, and is therefore considered to be a variety of the pluricentric Malay language. However, it does differ from Malaysian Malay in several respects, with differences in pronunciation and vocabulary. These differences are due mainly to the Dutch and Javanese influences on Indonesian. Indonesian was also influenced by the Malayu Pasar literally, market Malay, which was the lingua franca of the archipelago in colonial times, and thus indirectly by other spoken languages of the islands. Malaysian Malay claims to be closer to the classical Malay of earlier centuries, even though modern Malaysian has been heavily influenced, in lexicon as well as in syntax, by English. The question of whether High Malay, court Malay or Low Malay, Bazaar Malay was the true parent of the Indonesian language is still in debate. High Malay was the official language used in the court of the Johor Sultanate and continued by the Dutch-administered territory of Riau Linga, while Low Malay was commonly used in marketplaces and ports of the archipelago. Some linguists have argued that it was the more common low Malay that formed the base of the Indonesian language. <inaudible> <inaudible> Dutch colonial era When the Dutch East India Company VOC first arrived in the archipelago, the Malay language was a significant trading and political language due to the influence of Malaccan Sultanate and later the Portuguese. However, the language had never been dominant among the population of the Indonesian archipelago as it was limited to mercantile activity. The VOC adopted the Malay language as the administrative language of their trading outpost in the east. Following the bankruptcy of the VOC, the Batavian Republic took control of the colony in 1799 and it was only then that education in and promotion of Dutch began in the colony. Even then, Dutch administrators were remarkably reluctant to promote the use of Dutch compared to other colonial regimes. Dutch thus remained the language of a small elite. In 1940, only 2% of the total population could speak Dutch. Nevertheless, it did have a significant influence on the development of Malay in the colony. During the era of colonization, the language that would be standardized as Indonesian absorbed a large amount of Dutch vocabulary in the form of loanwords. Topic. Birth of the Indonesian language The nationalist movement that ultimately brought Indonesian to its national language status rejected Dutch from the outset. 
However, the rapid disappearance of Dutch was a very unusual case compared with other colonized countries, where the colonial language generally has continued to function as the language of politics, bureaucracy, education, technology, and other important areas for a significant time after independence. Sonjono Darjo Widjojo even goes so far as to say that, Indonesian is perhaps the only language that has achieved the status of a national language in its true sense since it truly dominates in all spheres of Indonesian society. The ease with which Indonesia eliminated the language of its former colonial power can perhaps be explained as much by Dutch policy as by Indonesian nationalism, though. In marked contrast to the French, Spanish and Portuguese, who pursued an assimilation colonial policy, or even the British, the Dutch did not attempt to spread their language among the indigenous population. In fact, they consciously prevented the language from being spread by refusing to provide education, especially in Dutch, to the native Indonesians so they would not come to see themselves as equals. Moreover, the Dutch wished to prevent the Indonesians from elevating their perceived social status by taking on elements of Dutch culture. Thus, until the 1930s, they maintained a minimalist regime and allowed Malay to spread quickly throughout the archipelago. Dutch dominance at that time covered nearly all aspects, with official forums requiring the use of Dutch, although since the Youth Congress 1928, the use of Indonesian as the national language was agreed on as one of the tools in the pro-independence struggle. As of it, Muhammad Husni Thamrin invade actions underestimating Indonesian. After some criticism and protests, the use of Indonesian was allowed since the Volksrad sessions held in July 1938. By the time they tried to counter the spread of Malay by teaching Dutch to the natives, it was too late, and in 1942, the Japanese conquered Indonesia and outlawed the use of the Dutch language. Three years later, the Indonesians themselves formally abolished the language and established Bahasa Indonesia as the national language of the new nation. <laughs> Adoption as national language The adoption of Indonesian as the country's national language was in contrast to most other post-colonial states, as neither the language with the most native speakers in this case, Javanese nor the language of the former European colonial power in this case, Dutch was to be adopted, but rather a local language with many fewer native speakers than the most widely spoken local language nevertheless, Malay was the second most widely spoken language in the colony after Javanese, and had many L2 speakers using it for trade, administration, and education. In 1945 when Indonesia declared its independence, Indonesian was formally declared the national language, although then it was the native language of only about 5% of the population, whereas Javanese and Sundanese were the mother tongues of 42-48% and 15% respectively. It was a combination of nationalistic, political, and practical concerns that ultimately led to the successful adoption of Indonesian as a national language. In 1945, Javanese was easily the most prominent language in Indonesia. It was the native language of nearly half the population, the primary language of politics and economics, and the language of courtly, religious, and literary tradition. What it lacked, however, was the ability to unite the diverse Indonesian population as a whole. With thousands of islands and hundreds of different languages, the newly independent country of Indonesia had to find a national language that could realistically be spoken by the majority of the population and that would not divide the nation by favoring one ethnic group, namely the Javanese, over the others. In 1945, Indonesian was already in widespread use, in fact, it had been for roughly a thousand years. Over that long period of time, Malay, which would later become standardized as Indonesian, was the primary language of commerce and travel. In addition, it was the language used for the propagation of Islam in the 13th to 17th centuries, as well as the language of instruction used by Portuguese and Dutch missionaries attempting to convert the indigenous people to Christianity. The combination of all of these factors meant that the language was already known to some degree by most of the population, and it could be more easily adopted as the national language than perhaps any other. Moreover, it was the language of the Sultanate of Brunei and of the future Malaysia, on which some Indonesian nationalists had claims see Greater Indonesia. Over the first 53 years of Indonesian independence, the country's first two presidents, Sukarno and Suharto constantly nurtured the sense of national unity embodied by Indonesian, and the language remains an important component of Indonesian identity today. 
Through a language planning program that made Indonesian the language of politics, education, and nation building in general, Indonesia became one of the few success stories of an indigenous language effectively overtaking that of a country's colonizers to become the de jure and de facto official language. It is a unique and somewhat unusual story, especially considering the historical dominance of Javanese, a diverse collection of peoples were able to compromise to hold the nation together. Today, Indonesian continues to function as the language of national identity as the Congress of Indonesian Youth envisioned, and it also serves as the language of education, literacy, modernization, and social mobility. Despite still being a second language to most Indonesian citizens, it is unquestionably the language of the Indonesian nation as a whole, as it has had unrivaled success as a factor in nation building and the strengthening of Indonesian identity. Topic: <laughs> Modern and Colloquial Indonesian. While Indonesian is spoken as a mother tongue by only a small proportion of Indonesia's large population i.e. mainly those who reside within the vicinity of Jakarta and other large predominantly Indonesian-speaking cities such as Maidan and Balikpapan, over 200 million people regularly make use of the national language, with varying degrees of proficiency. In a nation that boasts more than 700 native languages and a vast array of ethnic groups, it plays an important unifying and cross-archipelagic role for the country. Use of the national language is abundant in the media, government bodies, schools, universities, workplaces, among members of the Indonesian upper class or nobility and also in many other formal situations, although the 2010 Indonesian census shows that only 19.94% of people over five years old speak mainly Indonesian at home, standard and formal Indonesian is used in books and newspapers and on television, radio news broadcasts, however, few native Indonesian speakers use the formal language in their daily conversations. While this is a phenomenon common to most languages in the world for example, spoken English does not always correspond to its written standards, the proximity of spoken Indonesian in terms of grammar and vocabulary to its normative form is noticeably low. This is mostly due to Indonesians combining aspects of their own local languages e.g., Javanese, Sundanese, Balinese, and Chinese with Indonesian. This results in various vernacular varieties of Indonesian, the very types that a foreigner is most likely to hear upon arriving in any Indonesian city or town. This phenomenon is amplified by the use of Indonesian slang, particularly in the cities. The most common and widely used colloquial Indonesian is heavily influenced by the Batawi language, a Malay-based creole of Jakarta, amplified by its popularity in Indonesian popular culture in mass media and Jakarta's status as the national capital. In informal spoken Indonesian, various words are replaced with those of a less formal nature. For example, tita no is often replaced with the Batawi form ng gak or the even simpler gak, while separati like, similar to is often replaced with kayak pronounced kaya. Sangat or amat vary, the term to express intensity, is often being replaced with the Javanese-influenced bangat. As for pronunciation, the diphthongs I and O on the end of base words are typically pronounced as E, and O. In informal writing the spelling of words is modified to reflect the actual pronunciation in a way that can be produced with less effort. For example, kapai becomes cape or kapik, pake becomes pake, kalau becomes kalo. In verbs, the prefix mi is often dropped, although an initial nasal consonant is often retained, as when mengankit becomes nagankit the basic word is ankit. The suffixes khan and i are often replaced by in. For example, menkari khan becomes nyarin, menaruti becomes nurutan. The latter grammatical aspect is one often closely related to the Indonesian spoken in Jakarta and its surrounding areas. Classification and related languages Indonesian is one of the many varieties of Malay. Malay historical linguists agree on the likelihood of the Malay homeland being in western Borneo stretching to the Bruneian coast. A form known as Proto-Malay language was spoken in Borneo at least by 1000 BCE and was, it has been argued, the ancestral language of all subsequent Malayan languages. Its ancestor, Proto-Malayo-Polynesian, a descendant of the Proto-Austronesian language, began to break up by at least 2000 BCE, possibly as a result of the southward expansion of Austronesian peoples into maritime Southeast Asia from the island of Taiwan. 
Indonesian, which originated from Malay, is a member of the Austronesian family of languages, which includes languages from Southeast Asia and the Pacific Ocean, with a smaller number in continental Asia. Malagasy, a geographic outlier spoken in Madagascar in the Indian Ocean, the Philippines' national language, Filipino, and the native language of New Zealanders, Maori language are also members of this language family. Although each language of the family is mutually unintelligible, their similarities are rather striking. Many roots have come virtually unchanged from their common ancestor, Proto-Austronesian language. There are many cognates found in the language's words for kinship, health, body parts and common animals. Numbers, especially, show remarkable similarities. However, Indonesian as it is known today was heavily influenced by several languages due to historical ties with other nations. Dutch made the highest contribution to the language, especially in vocabulary due to the Dutch's colonization for over three centuries, from the 16th century until the mid-20th century. Asian languages also influenced the language, with Chinese influencing Indonesian during the 15th and 16th centuries due to the spice trade, Sanskrit, Tamil, Prakrit, and Hindi contributing during the flourishing of Hindu and Buddhist kingdoms from the 2nd to the 14th century, followed by Arabic after the spread of Islam in the archipelago in the 13th century. Loanwords from Portuguese were mainly connected with articles that the early European traders and explorers brought to Southeast Asia. Indonesian also receives many of English words as results of globalization and modernization, especially since the 1990s, as far as the Internet's emergence and development until now. Some Indonesian words have also been borrowed into English, among them the common words orangutan, gong, bamboo, rattan, sarong, and the less common words such as paddy, sago and kapok. The phrase, to run amok, comes from the Indonesian verb amuk to run out of control, to rage. Due to the complexity of historical background of the language, Indonesian has become more advanced, even when compared to its own ancestor, Malay. Indonesian is neither pidgin or creole since the feature characteristics do not meet any of the criteria for either. It is believed that the Indonesian language was one of the means to achieve independence, but it is open to receive vocabulary from other foreign languages aside from Malay that it has made contact with since the colonialism era, such as Dutch, English and Arabic among others, as the loan words keep increasing each year. <laughs> Geographical distribution In 2010, Indonesian had 42.8 million native speakers, and 154.9 million second language speakers, who speak it alongside their local mother tongue, giving a total number of speakers in Indonesia of 197.7 million. It is common as a first language in urban areas, and as a second language by those residing in more rural parts of Indonesia. The VOA and BBC use Indonesian as their standard for broadcasting in Malay. In Australia, Indonesian is one of three Asian target languages, together with Japanese and Mandarin, taught in some schools as part of the languages other than English program. Indonesian has been taught in Australian schools and universities since the 1950s. In East Timor, which was occupied by Indonesia between 1975 and 1999, Indonesian is recognized by the constitution as one of the two working languages, the other being English, alongside the official languages of Tetum and Portuguese. It's understood by among the Malay people of Australia's Cocos Keeling Islands in the Indian Ocean, also in some parts of the Sulu area of the southern Philippines and traces of it are to be found among people of Malay descent in Sri Lanka, South Africa, Suriname, and other places. Official status Indonesian is the official language of the Republic of Indonesia, thus its usage is encouraged throughout the Indonesian archipelago. It's regulated in Chapter 15, Constitution of Indonesia 1945 about the flag, official language, coat of arms, and national anthem of Indonesia. Also in Chapter 3, Section 25-45, Government Regulation No. 24-2009 specifically mentions the status of the Indonesian language. The national language shall be Indonesian. Indonesian functions as a symbol of national identity and pride, and is a unifying language among the diverse Indonesian ethnic groups. It also serves as a vehicle of communication among the Indonesian provinces and different regional cultures in Indonesia. 
The language is used as the national official language, the language of education, communication, transaction and trade documentation, the development of national culture, science, technology, and mass media in Indonesia. According to Indonesian law, the Indonesian language was proclaimed as the unifying language during Sumpah Pemuda on 28 October 1928, developed further to accommodate the dynamics of Indonesian civilization. As mentioned previously, the language was based on Riau Malay, The linguists note that this is not the local dialect of Riau, but the Malaccan dialect that was used in the Riau court. Since its conception in 1928 and its official recognition in 1945 constitution, the Indonesian language has been loaded with a nationalist political agenda to unify Indonesia former Dutch East Indies. This status has made the Indonesian language relatively open to accommodate influences from other Indonesian ethnic languages, most notably Javanese as the majority ethnic group in Indonesia, and Dutch as the previous colonizer. Compared to the indigenous dialects of Malay spoken in Sumatra and Malay Peninsula or the normative Malaysian standard, the Indonesian language differs profoundly by a large amount of Javanese loanwords incorporated into its already rich vocabulary. As a result, Indonesian has wider sources of loanwords, compared to Malaysian Malay. It is sometimes said that the Indonesian language is an artificial language made official in 1928. By artificial, it means that Indonesian was designed by academics rather than evolving naturally as most common languages have, in order to accommodate the political purpose of establishing an official unifying language of Indonesia. By borrowing heavily from numerous other languages it expresses a natural linguistic evolution, in fact, it is as natural as the next language, as demonstrated in its exceptional capacity for absorbing foreign vocabulary. The disparate evolution of Indonesian and Malaysian has led to a rift between the two standardized registers. This has been based more upon political nuance and the history of their standardization rather than cultural reasons, and as a result there are asymmetrical views regarding each other's variety among Malaysians and Indonesians. In Malaysia, the national language is called either Malay or Malaysian, in Indonesia, it is Indonesian. Malaysians tend to assert that Malaysian and Indonesian are merely different normative varieties of the same language, while Indonesians tend to treat them as separate, albeit closely related, languages. The result of this attitude is that Indonesians feel little need to harmonize their language with Malaysia and Brunei, whereas Malaysians are keener to coordinate the evolution of the language with Indonesians. Although the 1972 Indonesian alphabet reform was largely seen as a concession of Dutch based Indonesian to the English based spelling of Malaysian. <laughs> Phonology <laughs> Vowels It is usually said that there are six vowels in Indonesian. These six vowels are shown in the table below. However, other analyses set up a system with other vowels, particularly the open mid vowels and In standard Indonesian orthography, the Latin alphabet is used, and five vowels are distinguished, A, I, U, E, O. In materials for learners, the mid-front vowel, E, is sometimes represented with a diacritic as A to distinguish it from the mid-central vowel, Topic. Diphthongs Some analyses claim that Indonesian has three native diphthong phonemes only in open syllables, they are I, kidai, shop, pandai, clever, O, kerbau, buffalo, lamau, orange, oi, or I, in Indonesian, dodoi, amboi. Others assume that these diphthongs are actually a monophthong followed by an approximant, so I represents, aj, o represents, a, and oi represents, oj. On this basis, there are no phonological diphthongs in Indonesian. Diphthongs are differentiated from two vowels in two syllables, such as a, i, e, g, lane, other, la, dot, i, n, air, water, a, dot, i, r, a, u, bow, smell, ba, u, lao, si, la, ut, Topic. Consonants The consonants of Indonesian are shown below. Non-native consonants that only occur in borrowed words, principally from Arabic and English, are shown in parentheses. Some analyses list 19 primary consonants for Indonesian as the 18 symbols that are not in parentheses in the table as well as the glottal stop. Orthographic note. The sounds are represented orthographically by their symbols as above, except is written ny before a vowel, n before c and j 
is written ing. The glottal stop is written as a final k or an apostrophe, the use k from its being an allophone of k or in the syllable coda is written c. D is written j. Is written psi. X is written kh. J is written y. Topic. Stress. Indonesian has light stress that falls on either the final or penultimate syllable, depending on regional variations as well as the presence of the schwa in a word. It is generally the penultimate syllable that is stressed, unless its vowel is a schwa. If the penult has a schwa, then stress moves to the anti-penultimate syllable if there is one, even if that syllable has a schwa as well. If the word is disyllabic, the stress is final. In disyllabic stress with a closed penultimate syllable, such as tingal stay and rante chan, stress falls on the penult. However, there is some disagreement among linguists over whether stress is phonemic unpredictable, with some analyses suggesting that there is no underlying stress in Indonesian. Topic. Rhythm The classification of languages based on rhythm can be problematic. Nevertheless, acoustic measurements suggest that Indonesian has more syllable-based rhythm than British English, even though doubts remain about whether the syllable is the appropriate unit for the study of Malay prosody. However, many linguists suggest that rhythm in Indonesian is not paid, because Indonesian is not a kind of tonal language like Chinese, Thai, or Vietnamese. Topic. Grammar Word order in Indonesian is generally subject-verb-object similar to that of most modern European languages, such as English. However considerable flexibility in word ordering exists, in contrast with languages such as Japanese or Korean, for instance, which always end clauses with verbs. Indonesian, while allowing for relatively flexible word orderings, does not mark for grammatical case nor does it make use of grammatical gender. Topic. Affixes In Indonesian, affixes take on an important role because slightly different affixes may have very different meanings. There are four types of affixes, prefixes awalan, suffixes akiran, circumfixes apadan, and infixes sisipan. Affixes are categorized into noun, verb, and adjective affixes. Root words are either nouns or verbs, which can take on affixes to generate new words, for example, masak to cook may become mamasa cooks, memasakan cooks for, damasak cooked, pemasak a cook, masakan a meal, cookery, termasak accidentally cooked. Many initial consonants alternate in the presence of prefixes, sapu to sweep becomes menyapu sweeps, sweeping, pangal to call becomes mamangal calls, calling, tapis to sieve becomes manapis sieves. Other examples of the use of affixes to change the meaning of a word can be seen with the word ajar teach. Ajar equals teach. Ajaran equals teachings. Belajar equals to learn. Mangahar equals to teach intransitive. Mangajarkan equals to teach transitive. Diahar equals being taught intransitive. Diayarkan equals being taught transitive. Mampalajari equals to study. Dipelajari equals being studied. Pelahar equals student. Pangahar equals teacher. Pelaharan equals subject, education. Pangaharan equals lesson. Pembelajaran equals learning. Terahar equals taught accidentally. Terpilahar equals well educated, literally, been taught. Burpilaharan equals is educated, literally, has education. Topic. Noun affixes Noun affixes are affixes that form nouns upon addition to root words. The following are examples of noun affixes. The prefix per drops its r before r, l and frequently before p, t, k. In some words it is pung, though formally distinct, these are treated as variants of the same prefix in Indonesian grammar books. Topic. Verb affixes Similarly, verb affixes in Indonesian are attached to root words to form verbs. In Indonesian, there are Adjective affixes 
Adjective affixes are attached to root words to form adjectives. In addition to these affixes, Indonesian also has a lot of borrowed affixes from other languages such as Sanskrit, Arabic and English. For example, maha, pasca, aka, bai, anti, pro etc. Topic. Nouns Common derivational affixes for nouns are pung, per, juru, actor, instrument, or someone characterized by the root, and collectivity, similarity, object, place, instrument, k, and abstractions and qualities, collectivities, per, pung, an abstraction, place, goal or result. Topic. Gender Indonesian does not make use of grammatical gender, and there are only selected words that use natural gender. For instance, the same word is used for he, him and she, her dia or, ia, or for his and her dia, ia or nya. No real distinction is made between girlfriend and boyfriend. Both pakar although more colloquial terms as sewak girl, girlfriend and kowak boy, boyfriend can also be found. A majority of Indonesian words that refer to people generally have a form that does not distinguish between the sexes. However, unlike English, distinction is made between older or younger. There are some words that have gender, for instance putri means daughter, and putra means son, and also pramagara means male flight attendant, and pramugari meaning female flight attendant. Another example would be olaragawan, which equates to sportsman and oleragawati, meaning sportswoman. Often, words like these or certain suffixes such as a and i or wan and wati are absorbed from other languages in these cases, from Sanskrit through the Old Javanese language. In some regions of Indonesia such as Sumatra and Jakarta, abang a gender-specific term meaning older brother is commonly used as a form of address for older siblings, males, while kakak a non-gender specific term meaning older sibling is often used to mean older sister. Similarly, more direct influences from other languages, such as Javanese and Chinese, have also seen further use of other gendered words in Indonesian. For example, mas, older brother, mbak, older sister, koko, older brother, and sisi, older sister. Topic. Number Indonesian grammar does not regularly mark plurals. In Indonesian, to change a singular into a plural one either repeats the word or adds para before it the latter for living things only, for example, students, can be either murid murid or para murid. Plurals are rarely used in Indonesian, especially in informal parlance. Reduplication is often mentioned as the formal way to express the plural form of nouns in Indonesian, however, in informal daily discourse, speakers of Indonesian usually use other methods to indicate the concept of something being more than one. Reduplication may also indicate the conditions of variety and diversity as well, and not simply plurality. Reduplication is commonly used to emphasize plurality, however, reduplication has many other functions. For example, orang orang means all the people, but orang orangan means scarecrow. Similarly, while hati means heart or liver, hati hati is a verb meaning to be careful. Also, not all reduplicated words are inherently plural, such as orang orangan, scarecrow, scarecrows, biri biri, a, some sheep, and kupu kupu, butterfly, butterflies. Some reduplication is rhyming rather than exact, as in Sire Mayer. All sorts of vegetables. Distributive affixes derive mass nouns that are effectively plural, pohan, tree, pepohonan, flora, trees, ruma, house, perumahan, housing, houses, gunning, mountain, peguningan, mountain range, mountains. Quantity words come before the noun, seribu orang. A thousand people. Babarapa peguningen. A series of mountain ranges. Babarapa kupu kupu. Some butterflies. Plural in Indonesian serves just to explicitly mention the number of objects in sentence. For example, ani membeli satu kilo manga. Ani buys one kilogram of mangoes. In this case, mangoes 
which is plural, is not said as manga manga because the plurality is implicit, the amount a kilogram means more than one mango. So, as it is logically, one does not change the singular into the plural form, because it is not necessary and considered a pleonasm in Indonesian often called pemberosan kata. Topic. Pronouns Personal pronouns are not a separate part of speech, but a subset of nouns. They are frequently omitted, and there are numerous ways to say, you. Commonly the person's name, title, title with name, or occupation is used. Does Johnny want to go? Would Madam like to go? Kin terms, including fictive kinship, are extremely common. However, there are also dedicated personal pronouns, as well as the demonstrative pronouns ini, this, the, and itu, that, the. Topic. Personal pronouns From the perspective of a European language, Indonesian boasts a wide range of different pronouns, especially to refer to the addressee the so-called second-person pronouns. These are used to differentiate several parameters of the person they are referred to, such as the social rank and the relationship between the addressee and the speaker. This table shows an overview over the most commonly and widely used pronouns of the Indonesian language. First person pronouns notable among the personal pronoun system is a distinction between two forms of we, kita, you and me, you and us, and kami, us, but not you. The distinction is increasingly confused in colloquial Indonesian. Saya and aku are the two major forms of I. Saya is the more formal form, whereas aku is used with family, friends, and between lovers. Sahaya is an older literary form of saya. Sa ha ya may also be used for we, but in such cases it is usually used with Sakalian or Samua. All. This form is ambiguous as to whether it corresponds with inclusive kami or exclusive kita. Less common are hamba. Slave. Hamba tuan, hamba datuk, all extremely humble, beta, a royal addressing oneself, padak, a commoner addressing a royal, kami, royal or editorial, we, kita, timan, and kawan. Second person pronouns there are three common forms of you, anda, polite, kamu, familiar, and kalyan, all, commonly used as a plural form of you, slightly informal. Anda is used with strangers, recent acquaintances, in advertisements, in business, and when you wish to show respect, though terms like tuan, sir, and other titles also show respect, while kamu is used in situations where the speaker would use aku for I. Anda sakalian is polite plural. Engkau, kau, commonly shortened to kau, and hang are used to social inferiors, awik to equals, and chik C -E -K before a name is polite, traditionally used for people without title. The compounds makshik and pakshik are used with village elders one is well acquainted with or the guest of. Third person pronouns the common word for s, he, and they, is ia, which has the object and emphatic, focused form dia. Bliao, his, her honor, is respectful. As with you, names and kin terms are extremely common. Mareka, someone, mareka itu, or orang itu, those people are used for they regional varieties there are a large number of other words for i and you many regional dialectical or borrowed from local languages sodara you male and saudari female plural sodara sodara or saudari saudari show utmost respect daku i and dikau you are poetic or romantic indonesian gua i from Hokkien Chinese, wo pei, hog, goa, and lu, you, Chinese, ru pei, hog, lu, are slang and extremely informal. The pronouns aku, kamu, engkau, ia, kami, and kita are indigenous to Indonesian. Topic. Possessive pronouns Aku, kamu, engkau, and ia have short possessive enclitic forms. All others retain their full forms like other nouns, as does emphatic dia, maya saya, maya kita, maya anda, maya dia. My table, our table, your table, his, her table. There are also proclitic forms of aku, ku and kau. These are used when there is no emphasis on the pronoun. Ku dengar raja itu mendarita penyakit kulit. Aku mengedahui ilmu kidokteran. 
Aku la yang akan mengobati dia. It has come to my attention that the king has a skin disease. I am skilled in medicine. I will cure him. Here ku verb is used for a general report, aku verb is used for a factual statement, and emphatic aku la mang verb approximately equals, I am the one who. For focus on the pronoun. Topic. Demonstrative pronouns There are two demonstrative pronouns in Indonesian. Ini, this, these, is used for a noun which is generally near to the speaker. Itu, that, those, is used for a noun which is generally far from the speaker. Either may sometimes be equivalent to English. The. There is no difference between singular and plural. However, plural can be indicated through duplication of a noun followed by a ini or itu. The word yang, which, is often placed before demonstrative pronouns to give emphasis and a sense of certainty, particularly when making references or inquiries about something, someone, like English, this one, or that one. Topic. Verbs Verbs are not inflected for person or number, and they are not marked for tense. Tense is instead denoted by time adverbs, such as yesterday, or by other tense indicators, such as suda, already, and bellum, not yet. On the other hand, there is a complex system of verb affixes to render nuances of meaning and to denote voice or intentional and accidental moods. Some of these affixes are ignored in colloquial speech. Examples of these are the prefixes d patient focus, traditionally called passive voice, with ova word order in the third person, and oav in the first or second persons, mang agent focus, traditionally called active voice, with avo word order, member and dipper causative, agent and patient focus, ber stative or habitual, intransitive vs order, and ter agentless actions, such as those which are involuntary, sudden, stative or accidental, for va equals vo order, the suffixes con causative or benefactive and i locative, repetitive, or exhaustive, and the circumfixes ber and plural subject, diffuse action and k an unintentional or potential action or state Duduk to sit down Mendudukan to sit someone down, give someone a seat, to appoint Menduduki to sit on, to occupy Didudukan to be given a seat, to be appointed Didaduki to be sat on, to be occupied Terduduk to sink down, to come to sit Kejudukan to be situated forms in ter and k An air often equivalent to adjectives in English Topic. Negation Four words are used for negation in Indonesian, namely tida, bukan, jangan, and belum. Tida not, often shortened to talk, is used for the negation of verbs and adjectives. Bukan be not is used in the negation of a noun, for example. Topic. Prohibition For negating imperatives or advising against certain actions in Indonesian, the word jangan do not is used before the verb. For example, jangan tinggalkan saya di sini, don't leave me here, jangan lakukan itu, don't do that, jangan. Itu tida bagus untukmu, don't. That's not good for you. Topic. Adjectives There are grammatical adjectives in Indonesian. Stative verbs are often used for this purpose as well. Adjectives are always placed after the noun that they modify. Hence, rumah saya means my house, while saya rumah means I am a house. To say that something is an adjective, the determiners itu and ini, that and this are often used. For example, in the sentence, anjing itu galak, the use of itu gives a meaning of the, that dog is ferocious, while anjing ini galak gives a meaning of this dog is ferocious. However, if itu or ini were not to be used, then anjing galak would meaning only ferocious dog. A plain adjective without any state of implications. 
The all-purpose determiner, yang, is also often used before adjectives, hence, anjing yang galak, also means, ferocious dog, or more literally, dog which is ferocious. Yang, will often be used for clarity. Hence, in a sentence such as, saya didikati ole anjing galak, which means, I was approached by a ferocious dog. The use of the adjective, galak, is not stative at all. Often the ber intransitive verb prefix, or the ter stative prefix is used to express the meaning of to be. For example, beta means different. Hence, berbeta means to be different. Awen means cloud. Hence, barawen means cloudy. Using the ter Prefix, implies a state of being. For example, buka, means, open. Hence, terbuka, means, is opened. Tutup, means, closed, shut. Hence, tertutup, means, is closed, shut. Topic. Word order. Adjectives, demonstrative determiners, and possessive determiners follow the noun they modify. Indonesian does not have a grammatical subject in the sense that English does. In intransitive clauses, the noun comes before the verb. When there is both an agent and an object, these are separated by the verb ova or avo, with the difference encoded in the voice of the verb. Ova, commonly but inaccurately called passive, is the basic and most common word order. Either the agent or object or both may be omitted. This is commonly done to accomplish one of two things. One, adding a sense of politeness and respect to a statement or question. For example, a polite shop assistant in a store may avoid the use of pronouns altogether and ask. Two, agent or object is unknown, not important, or understood from context. For example, a friend may inquire as to when you bought your property, to which you may respond. Ultimately, the choice of voice and therefore word order is a choice between actor and patient and depends quite heavily on the language style and context. Topic. Emphasis Word order is frequently modified for focus or emphasis, with the focused word usually placed at the beginning of the clause and followed by a slight pause a break in intonation. Saya pergi ke pasar kemarin. I went to the market yesterday. Neutral, or with focus on the subject. Kemarin saya pergi ke pasar. Yesterday I went to the market. Emphasis on yesterday. Ke pasar saya pergi, kemarin. To the market I went yesterday. Emphasis on where I went yesterday. Pergi ke pasar, saya, kemarin. To the market went I yesterday. Emphasis on the process of going to the market. The last two are more likely to be encountered in speech than in writing. Topic. Measure words Another distinguishing feature of Indonesian is its use of measure words, also called classifiers In this way, it is similar to many other languages of Asia, including Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Thai, Burmese, and Bengali. Measure words are also found in English such as two head of cattle, a loaf of bread, or this sheet of paper, where asterisk two cattle, a bread, and this paper in the sense of this piece of paper would be ungrammatical. The word satu reduces to say, as it does in other compounds. Example. Measure words are not necessary just to say, a, burring, a bird, birds. Using say plus a measure word is closer to English, one, or a certain Ada seeker burring yang bisa berbakara. There was a certain bird that could talk. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Writing system. Indonesian is written with the Latin script. It was originally based on the Dutch spelling and still bears some similarities to it. Consonants are represented in a way similar to Italian, although c is always like English ch, g is always hard, and j represents d, as it does in English. In addition, ny represents the palatal nasal, ing is used for the velar nasal, which can occur word initially, psi for English shish, and kh for the voiceless velar fricative, x. 
Both e and are represented with e. Spelling changes in the language that have occurred since Indonesian independence include Introduced in 1901, the Van Ophugzen system, named from the advisor of the system, Charles Adrian Van Ophugzen, was the first standardization of Romanized spelling. It was most influenced by the then current Dutch spelling system. In 1947, the spelling was changed into Republican spelling or Sawandi spelling, named by at the time Minister of Education, Sawandi. This spelling changed formerly spelled O into U, however, the spelling influenced other aspects in orthography, for example writing reduplicated words. All of the other changes were a part of the perfected spelling system, an officially mandated spelling reform in 1972. Some of the old spellings which were derived from Dutch orthography do survive in proper names, for example, the name of a former president of Indonesia is still sometimes written Soharto, and the central Java city of Yogyakarta is sometimes written Jahakarta. Topic. Letter names and pronunciations The Indonesian alphabet is exactly the same as in English and ISO-basic Latin alphabet. Indonesian follows the letter names of the Dutch alphabet. Indonesian alphabet has a phonemic orthography, words are spelled the way they are pronounced, with few exceptions. The letters Q, V and X are rarely encountered, being chiefly used for writing loanwords. In addition, there are digraphs that are not considered separate letters of the alphabet. Topic. Vocabulary As a modern variety of Malay, Indonesian has been influenced by other languages, including Dutch, English, Arabic, Chinese, Portuguese, Sanskrit, Tamil, Hindi, and Persian. It is estimated that there are some 750 Sanskrit loanwords in modern Indonesian, 1,000 Arabic loans, some of Persian and Hebrew origin, some 125 words of Portuguese, some of Spanish and Italian origin, and 10,000 loanwords from Dutch. The vast majority of Indonesian words, however, come from the root lexical stock of Austronesian including Old Malay. The study of Indonesian etymology and loan words reveals both its historical and social contexts. Examples are the early Sanskrit borrowings from the 7th century during the trading era, the borrowings from Arabic and Persian during the time of the establishment of Islam in particular, and those from Dutch during the colonial period. Linguistic history and cultural history are clearly linked. List of loan words of Indonesian language published by the Baden Pengembangan Dan Pembinan Bahasa, the Language Center under Ministry of Education and Culture. Note: This list only lists foreign languages, and thus omitting numerous local languages of Indonesia that have also been major lexical donors, such as Javanese, Sundanese, Batawi, etc. For a more complete list of these, see List of loanwords in Indonesian. Topic. Loan words of Sanskrit origin The Sanskrit influence came from contacts with India since ancient times. The words were either borrowed directly from India or with the intermediary of the old Javanese language. Although Hinduism and Buddhism are no longer the major religions of Indonesia, Sanskrit, which was the language vehicle for these religions, is still held in high esteem and is comparable with the status of Latin in English and other Western European languages. Sanskrit is also the main source for neologisms, these are usually formed from Sanskrit roots. The loanwords from Sanskrit cover many aspects of religion, art and everyday life. From Sanskrit came such words as svarga surga heaven, basa bahasa language, kaka kaka glass, mirror, raja raja king, manusya manusha mankind, sinta sinta love, bumi bumi earth, bhavana wana world, agama agama religion, stri istri wife woman, jaya jaya victory, victorious, pura pura city, temple, place, raksasa raksasa giant, monster, dharma dharma rule, regulations, mantra mantra words, poet, spiritual prayers, kasatriya satriya warrior, Brave, soldier, Vijaya Vijaya, greatly victorious, great victory, etc. Sanskrit words and sentences are also used in names, titles, and mottos of the Indonesian National Police and Indonesian Armed Forces, such as Bayangkara, Laksamana, Jatayu, Garuda, Dharmakerta Marga Reksiaka, Jalaveva Jayamahi, Kartika Eka Paksi, Swa Buwana Paksa, Rastra Suakatama, Yuda Siaga, etc. 
Because Sanskrit has long been known in the Indonesian archipelago, Sanskrit loanwords, unlike those from other languages, have entered the basic vocabulary of Indonesian to such an extent that, for many, they are no longer perceived to be foreign. Therefore, one could write a short story using only Sanskrit words. The short story below consists of approximately 80 words in Indonesian that are written using Sanskrit words alone, except for a few particles. Karina Semua Dibiyaya Dana Negara Juta Rupiah, Sang Mahaguru Sastra Bahasa Kawi Dan Masiswa Mahasaswinya, Duta Duta Negri Mitra, Mentari Kabudayan Dan Parawasata Swama Istri, Bazerta Karyawan Karyawati Lembega Nurlaba Sagara Burdharmawasata K Padesan D Utara Kota Kabupatan Prabalingo Antara Kandi Kandi Purba, Burwahana Kaledai D Kala Senya Dan Bursama Kapala Desa Menyaksakan Para Tani Yang Burjiwa Bursahaja Serta Burbudi Nirmala Sakara Burbaijia Barupakara, Saraya Merdu Menuarakan Gita Gita Mantra, Yang Marapakan Sarana Pugian Mareka Memuja Nama Suki Pertiwi, Dui Bumi Yang Bursidia Menganujirahi Mareka Karunia Dan Restu, Maraksa Dari Bahaya, Mala Pedika Dan Benkana. <laughs> Loan words of Chinese origin The relationship with China has been going since the 7th century when Chinese merchants traded in some areas of the archipelago such as Riau, West Borneo, East Kalimantan, and North Maluku. At the Kingdom of Srivijaya appeared and flourished, China opened diplomatic relations with the kingdom in order to secure trade and seafaring. In 922, Chinese travelers visited Kahuripan in East Java. Since the 11th century, hundreds of thousands of Chinese migrants left mainland China and settled in many parts of Nusantara now called as Indonesia. The Chinese loanwords are usually concerned with cuisine, trade or often just things exclusively Chinese. Words of Chinese origin presented here with accompanying Hokkien, Mandarin pronunciation derivatives as well as traditional and simplified characters include pasa bai shou bishou, knife, loading. Lu saying topic. Lu saying upper floor level. Mie mian greater than mian Hokkien mi noodles. Lumpia run Bing Hokkien. Loon pi a acute to the power of n. Spring roll kawan chawan chawan teacup tiko cha hu greater than cha hu. Topic. Cha hu Mandarin T E H ko Hokkien. Teapot, kuli kuli equals ku khu hard and li li energy and even the widely used slang terms gua and lu from the Hokkien goa wo and lu li ru meaning i, me, and you. Topic. Loan words of Arabic origin Many Arabic words were brought and spread by merchants from Arab peninsula like Arabian, Persian, and from the western part of India, Gujarat where many Muslims lived. As a result, many Indonesian words come from the Arabic language. Especially since the late 12th century, Old Malay was heavily influenced by the language and produced many great literary works such as Sayer, Babad, Hakayat, and Sulik. This century is known as the Golden Age of Indonesian literature. Many loanwords from Arabic are mainly concerned with religion, in particular with Islam, and by extension, with greetings such as the word Salamat from Arabic, Slamt Salama. Topic. Health, soundness means safe or lucky. Words of Arabic origin include dunia from Arabic, dunia dunya. The present world, names of days except Mingu, such as Sabtu from Arabic, spount sabtu. Topic. Saturday, Iklan Alan Ilan. Advertisement, kabar, kur kabar. Topic. News, kursi, krezi kursi. A chair, jamat, japed, juma. Topic. Friday, ijaza, ajazd ijaza. Permission, Certificate of Authority, e.g. a school diploma certificate, Katab, Katab, Katab. Topic. Book, Turtab, Trib Tartab. 
Order, arrangement, and camus comes camus equals dictionary. Allah Arabic, all as it is mostly the case for Arabic speakers, is the word for God even in Christian Bible translations. Many early Bible translators, when they came across some unusual Hebrew words or proper names, used the Arabic cognates. In the newer translations this practice is discontinued. They now turn to Greek names or use the original Hebrew word. For example, the name Jesus was initially translated as Isa Arabic, EC but is now spelt as Yesus. Several ecclesiastical terms derived from Arabic still exist in Indonesian language. Indonesian word for bishop is uskup from Arabic, ask yuskuf. Topic. Bishop. This in turn makes the Indonesian term for archbishop uskup agong literally great bishop, which is combining the Arabic word with an old Javanese word. The term imam from Arabic, imam imam. Leader, prayer leader is used to translate a Catholic priest, beside its more common association with an Islamic prayer leader. Some Protestant denominations refer to their congregation Jamaat from Arabic, Jumat Jama. Topic. Group, a community. Even the name of the Bible in Indonesian translation is Al-Kitab from Arabic, Al-Kitab Al-Kitab. The book, which literally means, the book. Topic. Loan words of Portuguese origin Alongside Malay, Portuguese was the lingua franca for trade throughout the archipelago from the 16th century through to the early 19th century. The Portuguese were among the first Westerners to sail eastwards to the Spice Islands. Loanwords from Portuguese were mainly connected with articles that the early European traders and explorers brought to Southeast Asia. Indonesian words derived from Portuguese include Maya from Mesa. Topic: Table, Banku from Banco. Bench, Lamari, Almari from Armario. Topic: Closet, Bonica from Boneca. Doll, Jandela from Janela. Topic: Window, Garija from Agrija. Church, Misa from Misa. Topic: Mass, Natal from Natal. Christmas, Pascha from Pasqua Topic. Easter, Pesta from Festa Party, Danza from Donka Topic. Dance, Pesir from Pasir Cruise, Bandura from Bandera Topic. Flag, Sepatu from Sapato. Shoes, Garpu from Garfo. Topic. Fork, Kameja from Kamiza. Shirt, Karita from Kareta. Topic. Chariot, Pampa from Bomba Hydraulica. Pump, Pigora from Figura. Topic. Picture, Rhoda from Rhoda. Wheel, Nona from Dona. Topic. Young woman, Sakola from Ascola. School, Lentira from Lanterna. Topic. Lantern, Padere from Padre. Priest, Santo, Santa from Santo, Santa. Topic. Saint, Pusi from Poesia. Poetry, Keja from Kejo. Topic. Cheese, Mantega from Mantiga. Butter, Serdadu from Soldado. 
Topic: Soldier Meski from Mosque. Aldo Kamar from Kamara. Topic: Room Laguna from Laguna. Lagoon Lalang from Lalau. Topic: Auction Parcero from Parcero. Company Marquisa from Maracuja. Topic: Passion Fruit Lamau from Lamau. Lemon Kartu from Kertau. Topic: Card Ingress from Ingles. English Sabtu from Sabado. Topic: Saturday Mingu from Domingo. Sunday, etc. Topic: Loan words of Dutch origin. The former colonial power, the Netherlands, left a sizable amount of vocabulary that can be seen in words such as polisi from Polita. Topic: Police coolitas from Quilitat. Quality actual from actual. Topic: Current rokik from roken. Smoking cigarettes, karupsi from karuptai. Topic: Corruption, kantor from kantor. Office, resluding from ritsaluding. Topic: Zipper, pelopor from vorloper. Frontrunner, personaling from versnaling. Topic. Transmission gear, setrum from strum. Electricity current, mascapi from machapij. Topic. Company, apotech from apotheke. Pharmacy, handic from handok. Topic. Towel, setrika from strikajjer. Clothes iron, bioscope from bioscoop. Topic: Cinema, spandic from spandoken. Banner, courtslaying from courtsluting. Topic: Short circuit, ohm from ohm. Uncle, taunt from taunt. Topic. Ant, tractier from tractier. Treat and gratis from gratis equals free. These Dutch loanwords, and many other non-Italo-Iberian, European language loanwords that came via Dutch, cover all aspects of life. Some Dutch loanwords, having clusters of several consonants, pose difficulties to speakers of Indonesian. This problem is usually solved by insertion of the schwa. For example, Dutch schroef sxruf greater than sekrup s krup screw n. One scholar argues that 20% of Indonesian words are inspired by the Dutch language. Before the standardization of the language, many Indonesian words follow standard Dutch alphabet and pronunciation such as o for vowel, u or dj for consonant, j, d. As a result, Malay words are written with that orthography such as, Passer for the word Pasar or Jalan for the word Jalan. Older Indonesian generation tend to have their name written in such order as well. Topic. Loan words of English origin Many English words were incorporated into Indonesian through globalization. Many Indonesians, however, mistake words already adopted from Dutch as words borrowed from English. This is due to the Germanic traces that exist in the two languages. Indonesian adopts English words with standardization. 
For example, imaginasi from imagination, universitas from university, accessory from accessory, geography from geography, conservative from conservative, routine from routine, and so other. However, there are several words that directly borrowed without standardization that have same meanings in English such as, bus, data, domain, detail, internet, film, golf, lift, monitor, radio, radar, unit, safari, sonar, and video, riil is real. Other loan words Modern Indonesian draws many of its words from foreign sources, there are many synonyms. For example, Indonesian has three words for book, i.e., pustaka from Sanskrit, kitab from Arabic, and buku from Dutch book, however, each has a slightly different meaning. A pustaka is often connected with ancient wisdom or sometimes with esoteric knowledge. A derived form, perpustakan means a library. A kitab is usually a religious scripture or a book containing moral guidance. The Indonesian words for the Bible and Gospel are Alkitab and Injil, both directly derived from Arabic. The book containing the penal code is also called the Kitab. Buku is the most common word for books. There are direct borrowings from various other languages of the world, such as karaoke from karaoke from Japanese, and ebi from ebi which means dried shrimp. Many words that originally are adopted through the Dutch language today however often are mistaken as English due to the similarity in the Germanic nature of both languages. In some cases the words are replaced by English language through globalization, although the word arbe Dutch, ardbe, still literally means strawberry in Indonesian, today the usage of the word strawberry is more common. Greek words such as democracy from democratia democratia, philosophy from philosophia philosophia, mythos from mythos mythos came through Dutch, Arabic and Portuguese respectively. It is notable that some of the loanwords that exist in both Indonesian and Malaysian languages are different in spelling and pronunciation mainly due to how they derived their origins. Malaysian utilizes words that reflect the English usage as used by its former colonial power, the British, while Indonesian uses a Latinate form reflected in the Dutch usage, e.g. activity, Malaysian versus activitas, Indonesian, university, Malaysian versus universitas, Indonesian. Topic. Literature Indonesia hosts a sparkling variety of traditional verbal arts such as poetry, historical narratives, romances, and drama, which are expressed in local languages, but modern genres are expressed mainly through Indonesian. Some of Indonesian great classic stories including Siti Nurbaya by Mara Rusli, Azab Dan Sengsara by Marari Sairagar, and Sengsara Mambawa Nikmat by Tullus Sutan Sati. Modern literature like novels, short stories, stage plays, and free-form poetry has developed since the late years of the 19th century and has produced such internationally recognized figures as novelist Pramoidya Ananta Tower, dramatist W.S. Rendra, poet Cheryl Anwar, and cinematographer Garin Nugroho. Indonesia's classic novels itself, have their own charm, offering insight into local culture and traditions and the historical background prior to and immediately after the country gained independence. One of the great is Shackles which was written by Armin Payne in 1940. Originally titled Bellingu and translated into many languages including English and German. As speakers of other languages Over the past few years, interest in learning Indonesian has grown among non-Indonesians. Various universities have started to offer courses that emphasize the teaching of the language to non-Indonesians. In addition to national universities, private institutions have also started to offer courses, like the Indonesia Australia Language Foundation and the Lembaga Indonesia America. As early as 1988, teachers of the language have expressed the importance of a standardized Bahasa Indonesia Bagi Penator Asing also called BIPA, literally Indonesian language for foreign speaker materials mostly books, and this need became more evident during the Fourth International Congress on the Teaching of Indonesian to Speakers of Other Languages held in 2001. Since 2013, the Indonesian Embassy in the Philippines has given basic Indonesian language courses to 16 batches of Filipino students, as well as training to members of the armed forces of the Philippines. Due to increasing demand among students, the Embassy will open an intermediate Indonesian language course later in the year. 
In an interview, Department of Education Secretary Armin Luistro said that the country's government should promote Indonesian or Malay, which are related to Filipino. Thus, the possibility of offering it as an optional subject in public schools is being studied. The Indonesian Embassy in Washington, D.C., USA also began offering free Indonesian language courses at the beginner and intermediate level. Words Numbers Cardinal Ordinal Days and months Days Months Common phrases Example The following texts are excerpts from the official translations of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Indonesian and Malay, along with the original declaration in English. See also Austronesian languages Bahasa, for other languages referred to as Bahasa Language families and languages Malay language Demographics of Indonesia Indonesian slang language Indonesian abbreviated words Comparison of standard Malay and Indonesian List of English words of Indonesian origin List of loanwords in Indonesian References External links How many people speak Indonesian? Free language resource Learning Indonesian Indonesian Swadesh list of basic vocabulary words from Wiktionary's Swadesh list appendix Indonesia WWW Virtual Library Bahasa Indonesia Dictionary Kamis Besar Bahasa Indonesia Dalam Jaringan Great Dictionary of the Indonesian Language of the Language Center, in Indonesian only Example recording of spoken Indonesian Informasi Bahasa Indonesia TV online Indonesia language Babla.co.id English Indonesian Dictionary from Bab.la, a language learning portal Permanent dead link Bahasa Indonesia English Dictionary Topic. English Indonesian Translation Services Google Indonesia Translator http colon slash slash www.indotranslate.com slash translated dash text dot php http colon slash 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 translate dot php http colon slash slash translation two dot paralink dot com slash english dash indonesian dash translator http colon slash slash i am translator dot net slash translation slash english slash to dash indonesian slash translation slash http colon slash slash www dot toggle text dot com slash main dot cgi question mark page equals translation Topic. English Indonesian dictionaries http colon slash slash www.softpedia.com slash get slash others slash home dash education slash camus dot shtml http colon slash slash indotic dot com slash delanglish dot html http colon slash slash indotic dot com slash delindo html